It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. For the past 36 years, we have been introducing you to students who help to raise your science IQ because they are so scientifically literate themselves. Play along with us today. We've altered our normal format here. We don't have students in the studio because of the pandemic. They're all back at their schools there. And uh, we have no buzzers here. We'll have 18 questions for each of our two teams of equal difficulty, different questions. And our traditional six categories of green things, zoo parade, body systems, let's get physical, science, potpourri, and dateline science, a five, a 15, and a 25 point question. The team that's ahead at the end of the game will come back to play again taking on, in this case, Samuel Ogle Middle School for the chance to move on to the semifinals. Our team started out with 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do, and we wish them a lot of luck, and we hope you enjoy the game too. All right, gentlemen, let's begin. It is now time to meet that team from Charles Carroll Middle School. Let's say hello to Kevin. Hey, Kevin, wave to everybody at home if you would. Good to have you here, Kevin. He's a first-timer on the show, as are his two friends here. Say hello to Osmel. Hey, Osmel, give us a wave. He's out there. Good to have you here. And running out the, the Trinity here is Jason. Hey, Jason, another eighth grader from Charles Carroll. All right, guys, let's get started with the game. Let's go to the green things category for five points. Here's the question. This American staple, also known as maize, is a fruit, a grain, and a vegetable. Corn. Corn it is. That's right. The Native Americans knew it, knew it as maize, and we know it as corn. Good start. Five points. Here's a 15-pointer in green things. The next generation of vaccines are likely to be produced in plants like this one, whose scientific name is Nicotiana. Uh, can you repeat the question? The next generation of vaccines are likely to pr be produced in plants like this one, whose scientific name is Nicotiana. Tobacco? You got it. Nicotiana, nicotine, that's the association I was hoping you would make. Good answer. Let's go to the 25-point question in green things. On a plant's embryo, you've probably done experiments where you put seeds and you watch them germinate. The plant's embryo from, that emerges from the seed is known as the epicotyl. Yet the plant's stem, let me start again. On a plant's embryo that emerges from its seed, the part known as the epicotyl turns into the plant's stem, while the hypocotyl turns into the plant's what? Hypocotyl is H-Y-P-O-C-O-T-Y-L. The epicotyl turns into the stem. The hypocotyl turns into this part of the plant. Flower? Flower? Flower, that's a good try. Actually, it's the root, okay? The stem goes one way, the root goes the other. Epicotyl, hypocotyl. Let's go to the zoo for five points. In fairy tales... Princesses often discover that kissing one of these amphibians results in the animal turning into a charming prince. Frog, right? Yeah, Princess in the form. Frog. Yeah, they're always kissing frogs, and sometimes it works out pretty well for 15 points in a zoo. You're doing well, guys. Here we go. This is an interesting story. A young leopard who'd lost its mother was recently seen in India nursing with an adult cow. The cow accepted the leopard as its own, illustrating the strength of this M-initialed bond. 
What do you guys call it? Uh, mother? Mother? Ma ma maternal bond. Maternal. maternal? That's it. It's the maternal bond. Boy, I like how you're thinking together and sharing ideas. That's why you're doing so well. Keep it up. 25 points in the zoo is a visual question. Gentlemen, look at this picture. Scientists think that they have found the world's oldest animal, a fossilized 425 million year old one of these invertebrates whose name means 1,000 legs. Well, millipede, right? Millipede. millipede. Yeah, mil. Mil, mil, mil is 1,000. Millipede. It is millipede, absolutely right. You deconstructed that word perfectly. Let's go to the body systems. Your last three questions before the first break. For five points in body systems. Even months after receiving a COVID vaccine, blood tests reveal that there are still plenty of these circulating in your bloodstream, making a booster shot perhaps not as critical. Antibodies? It is antibodies. You got it. For 15 points in body systems, there's really nothing funny about this so-called funny bone when you bump it. What do you guys think? We need the name of that funny bone. The femur? Oh, that's a good try. The femur is actually down below in the leg. We're talking about the humerus. The humerus and humor, H-U-M-E-R-U-S, spelled differently. Nice try. Let's get the 25-pointer in body systems. Streptococcus bacteria are able to fake out our body's immune system by tearing apart these cells, also known as erythrocytes, and then covering themselves with the leftovers. What body cells are also known as erythrocytes? What is erythrocytes? Streptococcus bacteria are able to fake out our body's immune system by tearing apart these cells, also known as erythrocytes, and then the bacteria cover themselves with the leftovers. That's how they fake out the immune system. White, white blood cells? Oh, I wish you'd gone the other direction. Red blood cells is what we're looking for. Leukocytes are white blood cells. Nice work, Charles Carroll. You end that first round with 120 points. Great job. It is now time to meet the team from Oxon Hill Middle School. Here they are, all eighth graders, our captain, Leonardo. Which you waved everybody at home, Leonardo. Nice to have you here. He's a veteran of our show, and first time on our show is Jaden. Hey, Jaden, wave to the folks watching you. Nice to have you here. And rounding out the three on the team is Mr. Gustavo. Hey, Gustavo. Welcome to you, and give everybody a nice wave if you would. All right. Again, you have 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as you do. Let's see if you can add to that tally. Let's begin with the green things questions. This is the first one for five points. A new book claims that trees actually have a heartbeat as they pump this liquid around their vessels three or four times a day. Sap? Sap, absolutely right. They're equivalent of blood. The sap that you tap for making maple syrup. We know that it's in there. Good start. Here's 15 points in green things. While oregano, that's really good in spaghetti sauce, is spicier than marjoram, Neither one is an actual spice. Since they're both the leaves of a plant, they're not spices, they're these. Herbs? Herbs, absolutely right. Herbs are exclusively the leaves of plants. Spices can be roots and stems and, and all other parts of the plant, but not leaves. Good. For 25 points, the tough one in the green things category. Any of you ever been to Florida? Hey, Jade has been to, hey, you've all been to Florida. Well, if you go way down to the south, there's the Everglades National Park. Here's your question. While the huge national park at the tip of Florida is called the Everglades, it could also be called the Everblades, 
since its nickname is the Sea of This. The Everglades could be called the Everblades, B-L-A-D-E-S, since the Everglades nickname is the Sea of what? Sea of Crocodiles. Sea of Crocodiles. <laughs> Certainly got a lot of those down there and alligators. The key word there is blades because what kind of plant, remember it's green things and not zoo. What, what kind of green oh. thing? Grass, the Sea of Grass. That's what it is because all those tall grasses grow down there. Nice try. Let's go to the zoo for five points. If you roll two dice, and they both come up one. You're said to have rolled the eyes of this familiar reptile. Snake eyes. Yeah, snake eyes, you got it. For 15 points in the zoo. In addition to king crabs, emperor penguins, and queen bees, the royal titles monarch and viceroy are given to these creatures that look almost exactly alike, but one tastes better than the other. Could you repeat that, please? Yes, we're talking about royal titles, like there are king crabs and emperor penguins and queen bees. Well, the royal titles monarch and viceroy are given to these two creatures that look almost exactly alike, but one tastes better than the other, especially if you're a bird. You've probably heard of monarch butterflies and viceroy butterflies. The viceroy looks exactly like the monarch, but the monarch tastes terrible. So the birds avoid it. Then they also avoid the viceroy because they're confused. So it's a kind of camouflage. Let's go to 25 points in the zoo and it's a visual question. I want you to have a look at this picture. Crayfish, or some people call them crawfish, like the baby lobsters they look like, are very tasty crustaceans, and they are decapods, D-E-C-A-P-O-D-S. Crayfish, like lobsters, are decapods, meaning they have what? See if you can deconstruct that word. If you studied your suffixes and your prefixes, you'll be able to tell what that means. Uh, ten foot? That's ten foot feature. or ten legs. Absolutely right. Good answer. Let's go to the body assistance for five points. All right. If you don't wear a helmet when you're riding your bike, and you're going to get it from me if you don't. If you don't wear a helmet when you're riding your bike, an accident might cause you to fracture this bone. Skull. skull. Say it again. Skull. The, skull. the skull or the cranium. Good. For 15 points in body systems. While sweating is one of the best ways of cooling off on a hot day, sweating doesn't work if this environmental variable is too high. Humidity? Yes, indeed. If it's humid, there's nowhere for that water vapor to go. There's no, the water can't evaporate. Good answer. And for 25 points in body systems, last question for you in the opening round. Sickled red blood cells, they're curved, have a tough time passing through blood vessels if people suffer from sickle cell what? Sickle cell anemia? That's it, sickle cell anemia, indeed. Good answer. All right, Oxen Hill, you've got 145 points. That's the way to start our game. Good work. We'll see you again in a few minutes. Let's welcome back that team from Charles Carroll, find out a little bit about our players before we ask them their last nine questions. Let's go to Kevin. And Kevin, boy, you started out well. You've already got 120 points here. Tell us how you know so much science. Well, first of all, my teachers, they've helped me a lot, and um, mm -hmm. especially a lot of online websites. Uh, Ms. Chaudhry, our eighth grade teacher, has helped me a, a ton with uh, vocabulary, prefixes, suffixes. So, yeah, my teacher. 
And that, that help is certainly evident so far. I like how you take words apart. Ms. Chudry is an, an excellent science teacher and a great role model for you guys. And uh, we appreciate all that she has done to get you guys ready for today. Uh, Why did you want to be on the show? Uh, well, I'm really competitive. I really like competition. And um, overall, I think my personality consists of uh, competitiveness. So. Well, this is a... Uh, this is a great way to uh, take on challenges and to see how well you do. Uh, have you thought about a career yet? Uh, definitely. I want to be an astronomer or a cosmo cosmologist. Anything you wow, a cosmo. That's great. Uh, yeah, some of the, uh, the great astronomers uh, uh, that have discovered things, of, you could be among their, those ranks. Do you have a telescope at home? Uh, no, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Put that on your wish list. You're playing a good game. Keep it up. And let's meet the other members of the team here that are joining. Kevin, let's go to Osmel. Osmel, good to have you on the show. Why'd you want to do this? Uh, I thought it'd be fun. Is it so far or is it kind of nerve wracking? It's a little, it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> well, you know, it's, 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 it's good to have fun, but you know, when you're on the hot seat here and you're trying to think clearly, um, it's, it's def definitely a challenge, but you are up to that challenge. What do you like to do in your spare time? Uh, I like to read books. Any kind of books in particular? Uh, comic books. Comic books, yeah, all right. Uh, what about, uh, would you like to be an artist? Would you like to draw and create your own comic books, or what are you thinking about? I want to be a politician. Politician, all right. Well, uh, there are politicians that are more successful than others. We hope you're gonna be a good politician and uh, keep all your constituents' needs in mind when you get there. Good luck to you. Let's meet the last member of the team here from Charles Carroll, Jason. Hey, Jason, why'd you wanna be on the show? I wanted to be on the show because I feel like there's many like topics on the show that I'm interested in and I wanna learn more about science. Yeah, indeed. You know, and uh, and you, like your teammates, you have a curiosity about the world, and that is evident, and that's going to serve you well no matter what you do someday. And uh, have you thought about what you want to do? Yeah, I have. I want to be a web developer or a software engineer. Wow. Well, I, I can tell with your voice that you're... Uh, you know an awful lot about, about that already, and you're probably gonna be very successful at it. Just keep the same discipline that you're showing us here today. All right, it's time to get into those second round questions here. You've got 120 points. Let's see if you can add to that tally. Let's go to the let's get physical category for five points. Here we go. If Marylanders have a favorite cluster of stars in the sky, Jason, this is up your alley, our astronomer in making over there. If Marylanders have a favorite cluster of stars in the sky, it might be the crab variety of this N-initialed cluster. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes. If Marylanders have a favorite cluster of stars in the sky, it just might be the crab variety of this N-initialed star cluster. Nebula? It is a nebula, the Crab Nebula. That's exactly right. For 15 points, and let's get physical. Last year, physicists were able to measure in zeptoseconds, Z-E-P-T-O, zeptoseconds, one trillionth of a billion, the time it took for one of these tiny P as in Paul, P initialed particles of light to pass over a hydrogen atom. For 15 points, what do we call those P initial particles of light? So, um, I think. Proton? Wait, is it? Photons? 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 Or is it light? No, light. Light. Proton. So, no, proton. proton means light. Really? Yeah. Okay. Proton? Oh, it was indeed photon. Photon was the correct answer there. Good try there. Let's go to the 25 point question and let's get physical. It is a multiple choice. Chemical element on the periodic table, chemical element number 100 is named for this F-initialed man who started the first chain reaction to make nuclear energy possible. Was he Fahrenheit, Faraday, or Fermi? This F-initialed man, 
started the first chain reaction that made nuclear energy possible, and chemical element number 100 is named for him. Can you repeat the choices? The choices again are Fahrenheit, Faraday, and Fermi. Fermi? Yeah. It just sounds, um, what do you think? Fermi? Well, um, Faraday was involved in electricity, Fahrenheit with temperature scales, and Fermi with chain reactions. It is indeed Fermi, and fermium was the right answer there. 25 points. Let's go to Potpourri for five. Scientists in Idaho succeeded last year in seeding a cloud to produce not rain, but rather this form of frozen precipitation. Uh, can you repeat it? Repeat yes. Scientists in Idaho succeeded last year in seeding a cloud to produce not rain, but this form of frozen precipitation. Think about what people might want. Snow. Snow. Yes. Snow. Snow is the correct answer. Yes, I heard you bandying that about. There are ski resorts in Idaho, and it was one way, instead of making artificial snow, to get it to come from, from the sky. For 15 points in potpourri. A math question for you, gentlemen. The cicadas that deafened us with their songs earlier this year return every how many years, which means in what year will they be back? How many years do they return? And after you give me that number, in what year will they return? Return this year? Yeah, this year they returned. They said that. 2017. Uh, they return every 17 years, and they're going to return in 2038. You got it. Perfectly done. All right, guys. I like how you work together. For 25 points in science potpourri, these two billionaires, whose last names both begin with the letter B, as in boy, wanted to be the first to fly into space using their own company's rockets, and they did it. Name those two B-initialed billionaires. So Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, or no, no, not Bezos. Jeff Bezos and who else? Who, who? Jeff Bezos oh, and, and no, oh no, oh no, 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 Oh, Warren Buffett, he certainly is a billionaire. He probably would like to go. The other was Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson from Virgin Atlantic. He went up on in his rocket. Nice try, guys. Let's go to the Dateline questions. So your last three questions of the game. Last three questions of the game. Here we go. Dateline for five points. The brightest of these celestial objects seen in over 25 years, an object made up of dust and ice and rock, and it was called Neowise, Streaked across the sky in 2020. I think it's comet because it's ice. Comet. It said ice, right? Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yes, the brightest of these celestial objects seen in over 25 years, an object made of dust, ice, and rock, and named Neowise, streaked across the sky in 2020. Neowise was a kind of what? Comet. Yes, indeed, it is a comet. That's the way to do it. 15 points in Dateline. In 2020, plastic-eating bacteria were discovered to be able to break, break down polyurethane, a plastic tough to recycle or destroy, by releasing specific kinds of these E-initial chemicals that we use throughout our bodies to digest food and help along hundreds of other chemical reactions. Enzymes? It is enzymes. The way to go. Last question for you in the game is a visual question. Have a look, guys. President Teddy Roosevelt, although renowned as a big game hunter, later changed his ways and convinced Congress with a picture of a dead bison 
that this national park, the country's first, should be off limits to hunters. Yellowstone National Park. It is Yellowstone National Park. You got those 25 points. You guys know how to play this game. That means that, Charles Carroll, you end the game with 215 points. That's a great score. Will it be enough to win today? We'll be back with you in just a moment. Congratulate yourself. Super work. We welcome back the team now from Oxon Hill, and they had a great first run, but before we ask any, any more scientific questions, a few personal ones about what they want to do with their lives and how they know so much science. Let's start with their captain, Leonardo. And Leonardo, you were on our show once before. What do you like about the show? Why did you come back? I came back because I got to meet a lot of great people while doing the show. You know, that's a great reason. And that's what's true about most things in life, whether it's a, a club or a job or anything. It's the, it's the people that make it. Um, how do you know so much about science? Well, first of all, it's mainly because my teacher's teaching me a lot about it, and I used to do it for a hobby. As a hobby, science as a hobby, I like that. I hope that catches on. Uh, career plans, any as yet? Uh, yeah, uh, I wanna be a CSI or something along the lines of criminology. Well, I think CSI, it seems like they're, they keep coming up with new editions of that. And the only thing about that is oftentimes they solve what they're after in just 30 or 60 minutes. But it's a, it's, it's a satisfying profession because it rights wrongs and it prevents things from happening. I wish you a lot of luck. You're playing a great game. Keep it up. Let's go to your teammates. Let's go to Gustavo. Hey, Gustavo, uh, why'd you want to be on the show? I mean, I really like science, and I just wanted to learn a little bit more. Yeah, we hope you're learning a little bit more, and we're hoping a lot of people at home are seeing how much you know already. And I asked uh, Leonardo how he knew so much about science. He credited his teachers. What do you credit for all of your science well, knowledge? My, my teachers, and also because I really liked science when I was little, so I used to read lots of books. Uh-huh. We find that students who read books do extraordinarily well on this show and they're gonna do extraordinarily well in life because it just says you, you, you travel the world every time you go into a book and you discover so much about human nature you might not have even thought about before. Keep up your good work. All right, let's talk to your last teammate here and that is Jaden. Jaden, you're on the show here, you're doing a nice job. Uh, how'd you prepare for this? Did you, did you guys practice together? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's certainly shows. And tell me about what you do in your spare time. Um, like Leonardo, in my spare time, I like to learn more about science and like read books and stuff about science. Yeah, well, that's terrific. Now, in that science theme, do you think you might want to be a scientist professionally someday, or do you have some other idea? Um, I have another idea. I want to be a neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeon. Well, that's certainly scientifically oriented. You're going to have learn a lot of science about the human body, and you've got a lot of education ahead of you, medical school and internships and all, but um, stick with it. It's a great profession, and uh, we certainly need uh, more great neurosurgeons. Keep up your good work in this game. All right, Oxen Hill, you have 145 points at this point. We have nine more questions. Let's see if you can add to that tally. Let's get to the let's get physical questions. The first one for five points is this. A meteor lit up the sky over Norway recently. If and when any debris from the meteor is found, it won't be called a meteor, it will be called this. Meteorite? A meteorite is exactly correct. Good thinking. For 15 points and let's get physical. In Florida, where beaches are being squeezed out by hotels and condos. New beach sand is actually being made by grinding up this material that contains silicone and is prone to shatter. What are they grinding up to make new sand? A material that contains silicone and is prone to shatter. Glass. Say it again. Glass. 
Glass, yes, they're grinding up glass. Glass contains so much material that sand is made of, and of course it's, it's not going to cut you at that point, but uh, there is plenty of glass out there, and it is coming in handy. Good answer. 25 points, let's get physical. All the planets rotate on axes, but two go in the opposite direction from the others. Those two are the third and the seventh planets. Name them. Let's hear some ideas. Counting on your fingers. You're starting from the sun. You're trying to make your way out. Mars. Mercury. Give me three and number seven. Third and seventh. All right, Leonardo, what you got? Mercury, Mercury and... Let me make a correction to that. Let me make a, a correction to that. It would be the no. second and the seventh. The second and the seventh. My apologies, not the third, but the second and the seventh. Does that help you? Correct answer is Venus and Uranus. Venus and Uranus. They have a, what's called a retrograde orbit. Let's go to Science Pope Brief for five points. All of the metals awarded at the Tokyo Olympics were made from these that were recycled from discarded cell phones. Could you repeat that, please? All of the medals, the gold, the silver, the bronze, all the medals awarded at the Tokyo Olympics were made from these that were recycled from discarded cell phones. Motherboards? They took the metal. They took the metal from the cell phones and they refashioned it into metals, M-E-D-A-L-S. The metals, M-E-T-A-L-S, became the metals, M-E-D-A-L-S. Here's a picture for you for potpourri for 15 points. A paleontologist who unearthed a coprolite, which you're seeing here, actually has found a bit of this that has been fossilized. A coprolite, C-O-P-R-O-L-I-T-E. You were looking at a coprolite, which is actually a fossilized bit of what? Fecal matter. Fecal matter, that's right. You, that's some, uh, some uh, fossilized poop. Got it, 15 points. 25 points for potpourri. To improve your diet, there's a rule that says, never eat anything that has more than five ingredients. If it does, it's considered one of these P, as in Paul, one of these P-initialed foods that has preservatives and additives and other ingredients that are less than healthy. Protein? Not protein. No, if you eat a granola bar, if you eat potato chips, these foods are processed foods, processed foods. Eat the plain potato, the plain banana, those are not processed. Dateline for five points. Reflecting the concern over COVID spreading at the Olympics, one cartoonist drew the Olympic Stadium in Tokyo as a giant one of these P as in Paul initial, initial dishes often used by scientists to grow bacteria. Petri dish? Say it again. A Petri dish. A Petri dish, absolutely right, good, five points. Let's get this next one. For 15 points, 82-year-old Wally Funt, who became the oldest woman ever to fly in space when she joined Jeff Bezos on his Blue Origin capsule last summer, was one of the original 13 women who started training for NASA's first ever space program, which was named for what small planet? NASA's first ever space program was named for what small planet? One that 
No correct answer is Mercury. Mercury, the Mercury program, followed by the Apollo program. Last question of the game for 25 points. A popular book talks about the dilemma faced by us humans. Since unlike most creatures that are restricted in what they can eat and do eat, we have lots of choices because we are these kinds of creatures. We can eat all kinds of things. Think about creatures that can only eat this or that. If you can eat everything, you're known as a what? Omnivore. Omnivore, that's right. The Omnivore's Dilemma is the name of that book. All right. That means you finished the game with 210 points, Oxen Hill. Well, we've had ties in the past, and we've had really close games, and this was a nail-biter. It came down to just five points. Our final tally today is Oxen Hill, 210. Charles Carroll, 215. So by five points, Charles Carroll, congratulations to you. Let's give a round of applause to Charles Carroll, Miss Chaudhry, and Mr. Hendershot for doing a great job. And let's give another round of applause to a tremendous team from Oxen Hill, Miss Perry, first time sponsor, and look how close she came. Jaden, Leonardo, and Gustavo, congratulations, super job here. Osmel, Kevin, and Jason, uh, you take it home today by five points, so we will see you again samuel ogle middle school in the next round and possibly see you in the semifinals. everybody played a super game here today and as i said at the outset i hope you had some fun this was meant to showcase wonderful students like you and we did that today you came through you were the stars of the show and i hope you enjoy yourself seeing yourselves on youtube and on our tv channels on cable and uh, i hope this is a stepping stone to other things Many of you talked about wanting to be scientists. I hope this is just one step that you can look back on and say, this helped encourage me along the way. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, there's Mr. Hendershot. Mr. Hendershot, nice to see you here today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, your school is the winner today, 215 to 210. And uh, Ooh, close uh, one. appreciate close your one. support. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Yeah, and we yeah. thank all of you. And we thank everybody out there watching, and we hope to see you next time on another edition of the Science Bowl.